the polarization of light going to be the topic of this lesson in my new general physics playlist, which when complete will cover a full year of university algebra based physics. Now it turns out that light having wave light characteristics also has a particular orientation associated with every light wave. So in that orientation, we might uh, define it, you know, anchored to the electric field. And I realize there's a perpendicular electric and magnetic field, but maybe we anchor it to the electric field. Maybe it's anchored so that the electric field is pointed in the upward direction or pointed in the downward direction or to the left or to the right or something like that or anything in between. The key is, is there's an infinite number of possible orientations as you kind of go around the circle, if you will. Well, you can have unpolarized light, which is just a mix of light waves of all the possible orientations, but you can also have polarized light, where you have light of just predominantly one of those orientations as well. My name is Chad, and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, if you're new to the channel, we've got comprehensive playlists for general chemistry, organic chemistry, general physics, and high school chemistry. And on chadsprep.com, you'll find premium master courses for the same that include study guides and a ton of practice. You'll also find comprehensive prep courses for the DAT, the MCAT, and the OAT. So we will start this lesson off with the polarization of unpolarized light, light that is composed of light waves of all the possible orientations. So, and this is best accomplished with what we call a polarizing filter. And so we're gonna shine some incident light into that polarizing filter and the intensity of that incident light we're gonna call I naught. And a fraction of that light's gonna come out the other side and we'll call the intensity of that fraction I. And it turns out there's a simple relationship here. So for polarizing unpolarized light that just says that the fraction of the incident light that makes it through is half. So, and that's it. It's a very simple relationship. And this is the principle behind how polarizing sunglasses work. And here I've got a set of polarizing sunglasses. My life, my wife, my life, my wife, my life and my wife loves to wear here. So, and you can see, so if I got the brightness of the light here, but if I put it behind the sunglass, it dims because half of the intensity is being blocked effectively. I don't know how, you know, how, you know, these are kind of cheap sunglasses, so don't tell my wife I said that, but they're cheap sunglasses, so it's maybe not half in this case, they're probably not well designed, but uh, in principle for a polarizing filter, it's supposed to be half. So that's kind of the idea with polarizing sunglasses. Now that's the polarization of unpolarized light. We can also talk about the polarization of polarized light, light that's already been polarized. And so the idea is that these polarizing filters have a particular orientation associated with them. So, and based on how you orient them, so the unpolarized light that comes through so uh, the, the direction or orientation, particular orientation that's predominantly coming through will change if you just rotate this polarizing filter and stuff like that. So these filters have a particular orientation and their relationship to what light they let through and what light they block is totally related to that. So keep that in mind. So if I take now another polarizing filter, so in this polarizing filter, I'm gonna change the orientation of it in some way, shape or form. And so if we just isolate this scenario now where we've got polarized light that is now incident on a new polarizing filter, we'd now call this I naught and the light coming out the other side would be I. And the mathematical relationship between this is now governed by this equation here where the amount that makes it through is equal to the, in, uh, the incident amount uh, times cosine of theta squared or cosine squared theta, same diff. If you look at cosine theta, cosine theta, well cosine of zero is one. If your filter has exactly the same orientation as the filter that it just passed through and that therefore the same orientation as the light that just passed through, well then it's not gonna block out anything because the cosine of zero is one and one squared is still one and I would equal I naught, okay. But if you turn this filter so that it's 90 degrees from the original filter and therefore 90 degrees different from the polarized light that made it through, well, the cosine of 90 is zero, and zero squared is still zero, and all of a sudden the amount of light that makes it through is zero. So, well, again, my wife likes polarizing sunglasses, so she's got a couple of pairs here so we can kind of demonstrate this. Now, keep in mind, uh, these are probably kind of cheap sunglasses, so how, how good a job they do, we'll see. Uh, let's see how this goes. So if it doesn't work too out too well, just edit this out. All right, one of those was not too bad. So you saw as I rotated one of the pairs of sunglasses to be 90 degrees from the other pair. So the light got markedly dimmer. Now it didn't go to zero as the equation would predict here, but again, they're probably cheap sunglasses. So, uh, but it did get markedly dimmer as it should according to our lovely equation here. And so, but these are the only two real equations governing our polarization process. And the key is you just gotta know, am I polarizing unpolarized light 
or am I polarizing light that's already been polarized, in which case I just need to know the angle between uh, the, the orientation of the filter and the orientation of the light uh, that's already polarized, if you will. And so the question we're gonna do in this regard says, unpolarized light passes through a polarizing filter before passing through a second polarizing filter oriented 60 degrees from the first filter. What fraction of the intensity of the original unpolarized light passes through the second filter? So it's a two part question here. So we'll keep this diagram because we're going to use it here. And so the first part is just dealing with polarizing unpolarized light. So in this case, uh, the relationship between I and I naught is just this one here again. And so the amount that makes it through is half the original incident intensity. So that's half the equation. Now, the rest of it though, is now gonna be looking at the relationship between the incident polarized light and the amount that makes it through. And in this case, it's governed by this equation right here. And so in this case, I is gonna equal I naught times the cosine, we're told it's 60 degrees apart, so cosine of 60 squared or cosine squared 60, same diff. So, well, I chose 60 degrees on purpose because cosine of 60 and sine of 30 are both equal to one half. So and it makes the math here really easy. So cosine of 60 is one half, one half squared is one fourth. And so here I is going to equal one fourth I naught. But keep in mind, and we could call this maybe I naught number two. But keep in mind that I naught number two was equal to one half of I naught number one from the original here. So I number one and number two. And so the question is what fraction of that original incident unpolarized light actually makes it through both filters? So, and in this case, it's gonna be one fourth of the one half of that original, which is going to be there for one eighth. That's all there is to it. If you found this lesson helpful, consider giving it a like. Happy studying.